Hello and welcome to today's edition of Cantata of the Week. My name is Stefan Logus and I was fortunate enough to be one of the bass soloists during the Bach Cantata Pilgrimage 2000 and take part in a number of performances across that miraculous year of Bach Cantatas. Today's cantata, BWV 181, is a wonderful example of Bach the word painter, his ability to write picturesque music that literally jumps off the page. And this cantata already has a wonderful title. It is called Leichtgesinnte Flattergeister, which Richard Stokes beautifully translated as frivolous flippity dippets, people of a flighty nature who talk too much. And we can hear those flippity gibbets all the way through the first number of the cantata, an aria for bass. Both in the orchestral texture and in the vocal line, Bach writes kind of stop and start music of a very flighty, fragmented nature. And it really describes this wasted energy and directionless greed of the Flattergeister who deprive themselves of the strength of the word. And halfway through the aria, he introduces Belial, the devil, who also seeks to undermine God's word at every turn. And Bach sets that word Belial on a single repeated note. And remember John Eliot asking me to sing it in quite an ugly way, taking the vibrato out of the voice and trying to create really quite a grating, penetrating effect. And having listened to it again, I think I definitely got the ugly right. Um, listen out also for the word Kraft, power which Bach sets on a single note, a long minim, which then dissolves into semiquavers, really showing the weakening of the word in this aria. The second number, a recitative for alto solo, is all about the wretched state of lost souls and hearts of rock who forfeit their own salvation. And at the end, the alto soloist asks the question, if Christ's last words could crumble rocks and the angel's hand could move the tombstone, would you be harder still? And he composes this question in a wonderful way by just suspending harmony and the vocal line in mid-air, really creating a question mark at the end of the recitative. Beautiful also his word setting in the word zugrunde gehen, to perish, die, where he sends the alto soloist all the way down to the bottom of the tessitura. And we can really hear the bursting of the rocks in the second part of the recitative, in a very energetic and jagged continual line. The third number is a beautiful aria for violin solo and tenor soloist, all about how the endless number of harmful forms and pleasures concern to increase riches will nourish hell's flames forevermore. Listen out for the thorns and the worldly desires in the fickleness and flighty nature of the violin solo and again beautiful word painting in the tenor soloist's line the word Ewigkeit on a very very long note stretching across several bars or the soaring upwards melodic line for the words unendliche endless number four is a short recit for soprano solo which is really the turning point in the cantata where we go from hell and the world's fickleness to God's fertile land, its sweetness and the strength of his word. And again, beautiful example of word painting, the heavens opening on the word dies Wort and Decket, this world reveals, where the soprano soloist reaches all the way up to a top A, the highest note of the whole recitative. And the final chorus, number five, is a celebration of God's holy word and a prayer that it may be and should be our heart's comfort at all times. It's fruitful soil. And here Bach, after scoring the rest of the cantata for violins, oboe and flute, brings in a trumpet to celebrate God's glory and the Holy Word. It reminds me a little bit of the trumpet solo in the end, uh, the final chorale of the Christmas Oratorio, those rolling semiquavers. But whereas that piece is of a very festive character, here Bach celebrates in a much lighter, more delicate style, which you can hear in the trumpet solo and the texture of the chorus lines, but also in the middle of this final chorus, he suddenly sets this beautiful little duet 
for soprano solo and alto solo um, that has an almost magical-like quality and lightness, which really all of this underlining the message and character of this cantata. Now I always think of Bach as a man of very few words, certainly not a flippity gibbet, and not at all one in the musical sense. Every note, every phrase, every melody, every harmony seems to be there for a reason. Not a note seems to be wasted or out of place. And I think it's that depth and, and endless fascination with Bach's music that we were all aware of when we took part in this Bach Cantate pilgrimage. It really gave us a sense of purpose and uh, made us feel incredibly alive. Something that, looking back at the time, from where we stand now, after 12 months of hardly any live performances at all. Um, I think if we had the chance to do a project like this again, we would enjoy and appreciate it on a completely new level and understand even more than we already did back then what a gift it is to be able to make music of that kind with people and for people in the same space. I hope and I think that some of the joy that we felt back then is in this recording that you're about to hear and in fact in all the recordings of the Bach cantatas. So if you want to listen to more of the cantatas and delve deeper into the treasure trove of Bach's music, please head over to the Monteverdi Choir website where you can find all the recordings of the Bach Cantata Pilgrimage 2000. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy this week's cantata and thank you also for continuing to support music and musicians everywhere.